everybody. Welcome back to the Best Wines Media Tasting Room. I'm Kyle Meyer, and with me today, I have the great Matthew Dice. Matthew, welcome. Yeah. Good to see you, sir. Welcome back. You know, this is our uh, second interview with Matthew. Uh, The first interview was uh, really compelling, and went something like this. That's how it went. <laughs> Basically, we forgot to um, we forgot to put the volume on, so we never yeah. had an interview, and uh, and everyone was nice enough to point that out to us, and it was really embarrassing. So, Matthew, thank yeah. you for returning back. Yeah, um, back again. Yeah, because this is a very <laughs> well, because because in all seriousness, this is a really important story. Um, what what Matthew and his dad uh, is doing in Alsace is basically unprecedented. Um, Taking Alsace back to where it was, taking Alsace back to where I think it should be. Yeah, from my point of view too. <laughs> right? Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, actually just, uh, I'm, I mean, coming back to the terroir expression, yeah, you know, yeah. put back the terroir like being the main thing in mm-hmm. wine. That, that, that's the way we understood wine. And actually that was the way that People used to make wine in Alsace by the past. So right. That's... Well, because Alsace was, it's basically a series of villages, right? Yeah. It's a series of vineyards. There's a crew system in place. Each mm-hmm. village is kind of unique and distinctive. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But, um, you know, on the other side, what happened is uh, the, the, the historic side have made that uh, we, just ha- we just have an a, a Alsace appellation. Mm-hmm. And we had, by the time, the Grand Cru. But between, we, d- we didn't have anything. <laughs> yeah. It was actually, uh, from my point of view, a little bit of shame because that village, uh, some crew, that was the history of Alsace before. You know, people used to name wine by, by the place. So that's what we're working on. And I should say that it's moving now because we're starting to have some village. We're starting to have some... Uh, um, Grand Cru was more and more distinctive. So, but one of the main problem is, uh, you know, um, most of the time, name of place just remain like like a little things next to the varietal, and people actually just drink the varietal. So, we've tried to switch that yeah, exactly <laughs> so i mean what you're saying is like in, in alsace what was happening if we do like a burgundy equivalent it'd be kind of like having it say pinot noir latash exactly right instead I, of like freaking latash I, I was joking yesterday because I, I was speaking about one of the main problem why my, why my father decided to turn to field blend was people what's because some people used to coming back at the winery and say oh you know Five years ago, I, I was here and I tasted a very, very good Riesling. R- Riesling Grand Cru. There is three Grand Cru. <laughs> it's exactly <laughs> like if you go in Burgundy and you say, I've tasted a very good Pinot Noir Grand Cru, but you don't know if it's a Côte Roti. Uh, you don't know if, you, if it's a, if it's a Echozo, Latache, or right, right. Uh, Romane Conti. So that's, that's have no sense. So, so that's why my father started to... I think about uh, what what existed before, and I should say that before the phylloxera, before that, you know, almost all the vineyard have died in Alsace mm-hmm. during the phylloxera, mm-hmm. like like everywhere. But we had something very special. Was we have the first uh, real German war at this time, uh, exactly at the same time than uh, the phylloxera, and so we, I would say. We had between this first war, 1871, mm-hmm. uh, to the end of the second war, we had a period of time where the vineyard wasn't replanted. You know, in Alsace, there was, we used to have before the phylloxera um, uh, um, 32,000 hectares of wine. Hmm. And the today's vineyard is 16,000, so half. Half of the vineyard from the 1800s? Yeah. Wow. And actually, what happened is between all this war, it wasn't being replanted, really. So that, that means we missed a big part of history of Alsace. Mm-hmm. And actually, what happened is before the phylloxera, people used to have like three, we, we find 300 different names of vital. So we know that some of them are the same, but we can, 
like be sure it was at least 200 or 150 different varietals. So that means at this time in us as people used to um, understood wine and makes wine on the would say French vision of uh, uh, appellation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That means people used to sell like uh, uh, Altenberg only, uh, Kanzelberg or whatever. Right, place, right. Village. Right. And that's a little bit what we want to do. Come back to this. Now, after the war, was there um like a mandate where a lot of the farmers told what to plant in certain vineyards, or only certain grapes were were they were only asking for certain grapes to be planted? Um, or was it up to the farmers to determine what went into the ground at that time? Was there a, a mandate or some kind of stipulation, some kind of law that... No, the only thing was, uh, you know, after the Second War uh, in Europe, people wanted to have some wine. Mm -hmm. And I would say it's the market who have made what we have been planted. So it's the distribution was actually decided, mm -hmm. mainly. So people still have put the, the good thing on the good place. But, you know, you know, a very easy way to understand. Uh, in Alsace, you have m much more diversity in type of soil, situation, sensibility to the botrytis mm -hmm. than on a lot of other places. It's mm -hmm. maybe the place in France where you have the highest diversity. And, and the market, I would say, the market like the simplicity mm -hmm. you know for the volume you're right are, you're, no, you know you're right you so, so 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 at this time it was very easier for lots of people who were selling wine to just have riesling pinot gris whatever and actually they make the price by the vital and right. so i would say by the past we killed already the chasla which disappeared yep. because yep. it was the first level of price next we killed like le Vert because mm -hmm. it was the second level of price and I would say the Pinot, Pinot Blanc is almost died. Almost gone, yeah. So um, we think we can turn this to working by place. I would say it gives more freedom to people to plan what is adapted to the place. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're looking for, mm -hmm. actually. Do you feel, now, now, that the, now that we're going to these uh, single vineyard ideas of Alsace mm -hmm. now, just throw the idea of, of grape variety out and focus on the village and the individual vineyard. Now... The question I have is, how do you determine what grapes for what vineyard? <laughs> how does that happen? Or is this an ongoing process? It's exactly an ongoing process. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe I take a little explanation of what, how it, what it was made before. Before people used to, you know, they, are, they, did, they never removed like a big parcel and replanted. it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They used to have a wine would die. And they used to take the wine was just around mm -hmm. and, you know, put um, one, I don't remember the name in English, but uh, put it on the soil again, some woods. Yeah, and then come and comes back yeah, up. Yeah, got to it. Some new roots and all. That means, actually, by the time you have kind of adaptation of the varietal to the place and the field blend to the place. So some places like this type of, of varietal, so it's adapted by the time, like... They needed like 300 years to have this adaptation. <laughs> With vines so, dying all the time to figure out which vines did best where. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and, um, and so today what we try to do is like we have a, I would say, a more uh, deep comprehension of what happened is we just try to look at what is planted on the, on the hill, I would say by all the producer and use the main varietal who's on mm -hmm. and just putting them together on a very easy way. So, you know, it's just a, we say, farming sensibility. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's really actually harder to explain than to do. <laughs> well, you know, but, but getting back to the whole thing of village and terroir, you know, the, the grape variety and the prime grape variety in each yeah. area yeah. has its impact on the terroir, right? Like at some point, one particular vineyard is going to be known for doing, you know, a, you know, Gewürztraminer are better or for Pinot Gris better. But at the same time, you need this, this soup song, right? You need this mix of grape varieties to really bring the, the whole kind of vineyard concept into life. 
Yes, from my point of view, uh, for sure, there is some varietal who is uh, better adapted to the place, but I don't trust the idea that this specific terroir only match with this specific varietal, mm -hmm. because, you know, for me, it's a little bit a negation of a terroir, because you take an example about the best Gavir Saminaire from some best places. Actually, the result is people just drink the, the Gavir Saminaire and they don't know the place. Right. That's, that's <laughs> from my point of view, a negation right. about the terroir. Right, so right. I prefer to plant mainly Gavir Saminaire and when you have some Gavir Saminaire, you can have some Pinot Gris, it's working a little bit on the same way. Mm -hmm. So that can match together. Um, and sometimes you can have more, sometimes you cannot have a lot of difference. Depending the type of soil, depending the situation, the sensibility to the botrytis. But what I mean is, well, I want that people learn places of Alsace. Right, right. Otherwise, we're just like uh, one other reasoning producer. Well, you're, like a fa you're like a factory. Yeah. Like, like for me, what I want to try to do for the future is having a place for Alsace. Not just being some line on the Riesling list or on the Pinot Grigio list. Right. Pinot Grigio, yeah. like, yeah. you know, Grigio, it's Italy. So right, right. It right. doesn't mean anything for me. So that's why we fight for that. I think all these wines are a very good example. And especially the last uh, six, seven years, we work to have a very a wide range and especially uh, you know my father works for a long time on the Grand Cru and he fight a lot for having some Premier Cru we call it Premier Cru there is no law for the moment for, for mm -hmm. Premier Cru yeah, yeah. but uh, actually the result of this fight is that today uh, there is uh, about 120 different places in Alsace with built some dossier to um, ask to the NAO to have some Premier Cru so I think that's going on a good way. Matthew, thanks again for coming back. Yeah. Here's to uh, Alsace making its way on all those wine lists as mm -hmm. Alsace and not as Riesling, Gewürztraminer, or Pinot Gris. Have with spicy food. Yeah, exactly. No, you, forget, <laughs> you forget the percentage. You know, oh, the percentage, right? <laughs> Three percent of that, four percent of that. No, it doesn't mean anything. This is Alsace. Mm. That's the this is Alsace. The Cheers. Yeah, thank you. Thank you again. <laughs> What do you need? Just a thank you for being here kind of thing. So All right, okay, cool. <laughs> let, let me know when you're ready. I can, I can do another presentation. Like, yeah. this is 2% of uh, Musca, 6% <laughs> of a Sylvanaire, 5% of... <laughs> <laughs> what was and, the chance to last content and, again? And 2% of Petit Verdot. Oh, sorry. Oh, no. Petit, no. <laughs> <laughs>